before we get to that, I would like to discuss a little bit about data feeds and why the data feeds are so important for a successful sports book and why uh, lack, the lack of proper data feeds is going to be a showstopper for a sports book and is going to cause a lot of trouble and a lot of, uh, a lot of, a lot of headache. Now, of course, we know that a sports book that wants, that wants to acquire a lot of traffic, a lot of audience, and get a lot of, uh, get a lot of people to sign up, needs to have very, very good coverage on sports, particularly on football and American football and ice hockey and basketball. So you want to get as many sports as possible. And we, have, we are talking about 30, 35, up to 40 sports that, depending on what time of the year it is, can be very active or inactive at all, out-season. Out so outside the regular seasons and for each one of these sports you want to have as many as many events as possible you want to have all the possible soccer events that you can get your hands on because people are crazy about soccer this hasn't changed and will not change soccer is going to be the main money maker for sportsbook everywhere and it 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 hasn't changed and it won't change anytime soon and of course you want to have you want to have as many types of bets as possible. You want to have uh, match odds, handicaps, spreads, money lines, totals, and so on. We, we, we already know what these are. And we actually have about 38,000 types of bets in our database right now. Um, I know that might seem a lot, but it's not actually. If we're thinking beyond the, the, the defaults and the most popular types of bets, which are, let's take a look at this event, for instance. On, uh, I, can, I can pronounce that, sorry. So we're, we're looking at this particular event, which only has like 20 different types of bets. We have the match odds, and we also have Asian handicap, and we also have half times, and we also have uh, totals and a bunch of other stuff and we actually can we can we have events that can have about a thousand of these and those are very popular soccer events so that's that's it about the types of bets you want to have as many types of bets as possible you want to have for instance i'm going to i'm going to show another example for for um american baseball there we go oh it's gone no, it's not. There we go. So we have we have uh, baseball events over here, and we have the money lines, we have the totals, we have the run line, but we also have some other possible possible types of bet. For instance, if I go into an event page, we also have the first half totals, and we have the first half uh, run lines, and again we have we have uh, the second halves as well. As soon as the event turns into turns in play after the, you know, as soon as soon as the half time uh, is. Uh, as soon as, soon as the halftime odds are published, we show them on the website as well. Sorry about that, got distracted for, for a second. We also have the half times and we have the full times and we have the first half and first quarter and first period and so on and so forth. And then ultimately you're looking at odds. You need to have as, ma uh, as many as many of this as, as you want, as many lines as you as as you can possibly get your hands on because people don't bet on a particular line. They bet some of them some of them will be betting on spreads, and some of them will be betting on uh, other types of lines. And you wanna have you wanna have the odds, you wanna have the right odds, and the, with the right juice and the right profit margin in place. So this is again very very important. And what's even more important is that uh, the odds, so the lines, have to get updated in time. They have to, uh, for instance, if if something happens with uh, one one of the one of the the players in one team, one of the key players in one team, you need the odds to change because if if you don't, if if the odds do not change, what's going to happen is that ultimately people are going to be changing their bets and you're going to lose a lot of money. And last and not least, we're talking about live odds. We're talking about live betting, which is very important for for larger websites because uh, people like to watch TV and at the same time uh, wager, place bets. So. This is what this is what I'm talking about. This is live betting over here, and we also have a tennis event. And um, I can show you, for instance, if when we go to an event page, oh, there's nothing here. I'm gonna go to another one. For instance, let's take let's take Lugano. So this this tennis game seems to be pretty much over with. 
Okay, so let's take this this event. Now, we offer live betting. Not not we don't offer live betting just on just on the sports homepage, which would be this uh, this section that shows up at the top over here. We also offer live betting throughout the event pages. So pretty much everything that you see on these pages is actually live. Every every one of the lines over here is live and updates in real time regardless if you choose to bet from over here from from this area where it says events in play that's pretty much live betting or you choose to bet from over here from a particular event page if you need a specific a specific um, a specific mark a specific market or a specific line then everything is live once the event is live everything on our websites is live and this is very very important now Coming back to data feeds, why the data feeds are so important for the for the for the amount of for the amount of uh, markets the website is is featuring. Data feeds are pretty much specialized data streams in uh, XML format or JSON, which is more compact. Uh, and data feeds provide you with the event schedule. That means that it tells you that on the 13th of July at 1 a.m., whatever time zone this is, there's going to be an event between uh, between the Rays and the Red Sox, and it tells you that this belongs to baseball, and it tells you that it belongs to the MLB. So that's what the data feed does. It, it's, a, it's a way for um, computers to communicate between themselves and send you things, sending things like this, like what you see over here, which is an XML example of a data feed from Inet Pulse from for some some stuff a while ago, I don't know, maybe like two or three years ago. It doesn't matter. It's just an example. So this this is pretty much what a data feed looks like, and this this data scrolls thousands of time every every minute. And sometimes when when uh, it, when we're talking about some very popular events such as soccer, such as uh, the the finals in major soccer cups these things the data feeds can come in and provide you with data maybe as 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 much as a hundred times every second when something is going is happening inside an event and this is this this means that you get updates to live odds to the live betting odds that we've that we've shown earlier over here on the inner pages and as well as the sports the main section of the sports book there we go so this is all updated by a data feed in the background. Every time you see this changing, this 1.98 over here changing, that's because the data feeds have been have been posting this change in the background. And it also the data feeds also give you the live commentaries. Let's say, for instance, let's take Barclays and let's uh, let's go a little bit backwards. Uh, in April 2013, for instance, I'm going to show you an example of um, of the, the other types of feeds that we get. For instance, the score over here is controlled by a feed, by a data feed. So when whenever um, a change, a goal has been scored, a data feed is updating the score that we have over here. And we also get data feeds that gives us that give us live statistics, such as how many fouls, how many header shots, uh, how many crosses, offsides, and so on and so forth. So this is all controlled by data feeds. These are in play statistics, which are live statistics. Then we also get we also get this, which is sort of a ticker that we put together trying to show in a more visual way what ha what's happening throughout an event like uh, for instance rep um, substitutions and goals and yellow cards and so on and so forth we also get live text commentaries and this is very very good for seo because search engines like this kind of stuff like unique content and they like when it's a lot of them when they can see a lot of them we also get player lines uh, lineups we're also working on a visual way of showing the lineup so this is all controlled by data feeds pretty much this is all controlled by a bunch of gibberish like this that's scrolling in the background between servers between instances and between clusters that uh, that you need to have in order to run a specific uh, a specialized and high performance sportsbook of course the data feeds you don't just sign up for a data feed from a provider or just purchase them from somewhere you also need a piece of software to parse them to import them and to publish on the website so that's uh, called the parser or an api a feed api 
and we have we have those already already working and integrated and working very well so again for instance let's go back let's go let's go back to explaining why the data feeds are important let's take for instance the football the soccer season which is going to start soon or has already started and we have we have seen days when we have maybe 30 or 40 live events at the same time now these events are gen are going to generate a huge amount of traffic and a huge amount of updates to to the odds to the statistics pages to the scores and so on and so forth now naturally in order for your website to know what kind of content the visitor needs to see somebody has to create it now if you if you wanted to to create uh, this content manually using employees staff you can have as many as i don't know maybe you can hire a hundred thousand people working on this it will still be difficult because there's a lot of data the sheer amount of data that we're talking about is megabytes tens of megabytes of data per second which is i would say highly unlikely to to for for, for a startup sports book to be able to do in the first place even even companies such as bwin which has a yearly turnover of maybe 1.8 billion dollars something like that and similar companies bet365 even those guys don't manage everything in in, in uh in play manually with their own staff they they have the odds generated and provided by some sort of data feed from a third party so it's all a collaborative effort uh between betting agencies worldwide that put together this content and share it so that us and you can can access the data feeds and get get these events managed without having to help to hire hundreds of people to manage the markets manually and of course, if if you were to do that, to try doing that, and uh, one of the one of the one of the market managers would uh, maybe make a little mistake, maybe place the comma in a different place, the dot, the decimal dot in a different spot, then that could be a tragedy because you you could you can get maybe a thousand bets real fast on that particular line, and uh, at the end of the event you're gonna have two possible nightmare scenarios which would be horror scenario number one you have to cancel all the bets and that's gonna get a lot of that's gonna that's gonna get a lot of negative publicity uh, or you can just pay out and that's gonna be even worse so that means that without data feeds you can pretty much go down overnight if there's a mistake on a manually managed uh, market then the sports book can can be forced to shut down overnight and this is why a lot of the sports book the sports books out there just appear overnight they maybe run for a week or two make some money and then they just disappear this is the main reason why because they lack the proper infrastructure and the proper data feeds to to get their to to maintain their operation and to maintain their offers to, to the players now when we're talking about data feeds those are provided by of course third-party providers that we contract with um let's look into pricing for a little bit for instance enet polls is charging about 600 euros per month for a premier league which is soccer which is the main league in uh, the uk and they provide fixtures and odds from only one bookmaker so you, so if you wanted to monitor uh, other bookmakers uh, pricing market pricing or odds on the uh, premier league you would need to actually pay a lot more than 600 euros maybe 1000 or 1.5 so again when we're talking about soccer this is just one league and we're talking about hundreds of leagues that are active throughout the year and we're also talking about the cups and the super cups and again this is just soccer now if we're looking at the other sports we also have baseball we also have basketball we have american football we have ice hockey and we have horses we have horses and doggies which is actually very important for for some specific markets so this is an example of how much one single lead league could cost now if you're talking about the live betting gods which are a whole different thing because they they update a lot faster and more frequently than uh, the pregame the pregame odds then those those cost a lot of money actually those bet radar is charging like 6000 for a very basic set of live betting odds for limited coverage for soccer only 
And not only that, but you also need a specific a sp a special infrastructure to actually handle the updates when, when a particular line updates 10 times per second, for instance, you, or 10 times every 10 seconds, or 50 times uh, every five minutes. You actually, you actually need special software to deal with that because that's a huge load to the servers or the instances or whatever it is that the website is operating on. And... Of course, if we're talking about managing 50 events in play, especially with soccer, then I would say that's pretty much impossible without maybe 200 full-time employees to do that. And that would still that setup would still be prone for mistakes and a lot of things that can go wrong and a lot of mistakes that can be made that can generate a lot of trouble. Now, what we what we are actually trying to do is to contract is to contract different data feeds, redundant data feeds, so that if one of them fails, we have the other one, which will take over. And uh, each one of these data feeds provides us with a specific type of data. For instance, we get we get in-net polls to provide us with uh, scores on major soccer leagues. And we also get in-play commentaries. We also get uh, statistics and tickers and lineups. We also get live betting odds and fixtures from BetRadar and Global Sports Media. And we get US market data from Don Best, which is based in the US. That pretty decent provider. We've had some trouble integrating their feed because uh, their service is based on Windows and that's pure evil. But nevertheless, we managed to get it going and now we get we get US market data from Donbest. We get worldwide fixtures and schedules from all over from the from the West Coast to the to the East Coast to Western to Eastern Europe and then to Asia and Australia and we get fixtures and schedules for that. We get pre-game and live betting odds and odds for uh, pretty much everything except the big six US markets. Those we don't yet cover for uh, for live betting. It's going to happen soon enough. I know there is a lot of demand for that and we're working to make it happen. Unfortunately, Donbest doesn't give us the data. They don't pro probably don't even have it. So I would say we need to look at a different alter at another alternative. Other than that, we get uh, we also get an event archive by the way which is very great for very good for seo people are looking for manchester united games and want to see the whole history so we have that we have that on, on our website and uh, search engines like it very much and that's eventually it's going to draw a lot of traffic to websites now we are currently spending about nineteen thousand uh, euros on this feed and uh, it will probably grow in time and this low price that we get is only because is only because we buy in bulk. So we buy a set of feeds for each one of the websites. So we we are kind of a major purchase as a purchaser of this kind of data. So we kind of have the best deal that we can that one can get out there. Probably if we wanted to if we wanted to ask somebody else to go get this data from these four providers, the cost would be significantly higher i know for instance donbest donbest alone costs like 2000 us per month and their coverage is limited some of the stuff that we that we do tries to compensate for that so we can get the proper lines for the us markets all in all after getting the feeds um of course the software would be required as well to manage to manage all this data so yeah now we're looking at now we're looking at uh we're looking at the reasons why the data feeds are so important because without the data feeds, a sportsbook operation cannot be successful and cannot operate. And uh, the data feeds must uh, must be checked when, when you, for instance, when you decide to start one of these websites and you, let's say maybe you choose a different provider for, for the platform, then the, you have to check that the data feeds are there and that they're operating properly and that the market data updates in real time and that there are no mistakes in the numbers and so on and so forth. Now, the data feeds, again, are crucial for a 